What is up people, Fire here from AwesomeDudes.com and before you start with this video, just quickly, I wanted to tell you that you can go on my website here, AwesomeDudes.com and then you can go under download free assets and there you can download free assets. Now these are commercial free assets, they are not assets for this tutorial. The assets for this tutorial, this dark cave, you can find, link is in the description below so you can get them from that link. But these are other commercial free assets that you can use to develop your own games and you have 3D assets, 2D assets, backgrounds and whatnot and I keep adding new and new stuff. So you should definitely check this out and yeah, enjoy the video. Now that we have imported our assets and organized our project, let us create our gameplay scene. Now, if you're wondering, we already created, well, I mean by that is add some elements to it. So the first thing that we are going to add is going to be our background. So I'm going to go in our sprites and this is the gameplay BG and we're simply going to drag and drop it right here. And this is what is our gameplay background. Now, since we are going to copy this background and reposition it over and over again, before that, this is what we see when we go in our gameplay. And as I already mentioned, since we are going to copy and create multiple backgrounds from this one background, we are going to go here under game object and click on create empty in order to create an empty game object. I'm going to select the game object here in the hierarchy panel and here in the inspector panel set the position at 0, 0 for the X and for the Y and I'm going to rename this game object to backgrounds and simply drag the gameplay BG here and I'm going to duplicate it by holding command and pressing D or you can type hold command then C and then V it will copy and paste it and this is our other background so we can create multiple backgrounds of one background so we can simply position them like this one near each other but there is one trick that we can use so when we put them close like this we can hold, select this background first off, so select the top one and we can hold the V key, so not W, it's V key and now we will activate the snap tool or so-called snap tool. Notice now, notice how when I press the V key, notice that these two coordinates, notice these, this yellow arrow and this, excuse me, this green arrow and the red yellow, what am I saying man? This green arrow and the red arrow, thank you very much. So now they are here at the bottom right corner. If I release the V key, we don't have them anymore. So I'm going to hold the V key again. And now holding the V key, I'm going to left mouse click on it and simply put it down or position it on the down background. And now we have this. So now we have completed or we set our two backgrounds, one near or one on top of each other. So I'm going to copy, copy, I'm going to copy and duplicate. I want to say copy and duplicate in once, complicate, okay? So I'm going to duplicate both of them. And now I'm going to simply reposition them like this. And I am going to go here and I have select both of these backgrounds. So notice I've select both of these and I'm going to hold the V key now. So let me go in the scene. What is happening? Okay, holding both of them. Okay. Holding both of them, thank you very much. Reposition M0 for the X. What happened? Okay, so now they are here. And holding the V key now, is this gonna work? No. Well, now I'm gonna select one only, hold the V key and snap it here. And I'm gonna select the top one, hold the V key and snap it right here. This will work. But when we duplicate him like this now, so I'm gonna duplicate him. And now I'm gonna hold the V key by selecting both. So both of them are selected. Notice when I move them, both of them move. So I'm gonna hold the V key now. Let me just go down, hold the V key and snap. This will snap both of our backgrounds. And we need 12 backgrounds. So, so far we have six and I'm gonna duplicate. This is eight. So I'm gonna position them here and I'm gonna hold the V key and snap them. Okay, this is working out pretty well. So now I'm going to duplicate these. This is 10. And now I'm going to hold the V key right here and snap them. So this was 10. And now I'm going to hold again or duplicate them. And this was 12. Hold the V key. 
and let me just go here and snap them right away. So yeah, this is it. This is gonna be our scene with our backgrounds and you can count the backgrounds. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 12. Yeah, 10, 12, I know. <laughs> but yeah, you have 11 copies and you have one the original, so there are 12, okay? And now we need to add our grounds. And our grounds are located here where it says items. If I double click on it, this is what we have for items. We have the exit, we have our diamonds, the door, and this is our button, and this is our ground. So how can we get it? So if I try to add it now, this is what we have. Notice this right here is what we have. We don't want it like this. I mean, who's gonna play our game like this? Nobody, okay? So what we need to do is we need to select our items and we need to go here in the inspector panel. And when I say select our items, I mean here in the sprite editor. So here in the actually where the folders are. So select these items and go here in the inspector panel. And for the sprite mode that you see here, we're gonna change it from single to multiple. And we're gonna hit apply here. And I'm gonna go click on this sprite editor and this is gonna open these or this sprite, this image in the sprite editor. This is called a sprite sheet. And a sprite sheet is multiple images put on one paper. So as you can see here, we have our button, we have the exit, we have our diamonds, we have the door, we have the ground, and we have the spike. So all of these are put on a single paper, which is called a sprite sheet. So in order to get every individual element from the sprite sheet, I'm gonna click here in the top right corner, excuse me, top left corner, called slice and I'm gonna leave it out automatic because Unity's slicing system is pretty good and I'm gonna click here slice and now we have every single element separated. So this is our ground and I'm gonna, well, rename it to ground. This is our button, so I'm gonna rename it to button. This is our spike, so we are gonna rename it to spike. This is the exit, so exit and these are diamond one and diamond two, so diamond and this is gonna be diamond one and this one is gonna be diamond two and the last part is gonna be our door so this is our door and yeah we're good to go I am gonna zoom just a little bit in to see where is the slice part or the slice edge for our ground maybe we should put it a little bit just lower yeah, just so that we can drag it, so we can drag it wherever we want it. If you can see the blue line, this is representing where we are gonna slice our ground. So I think we're good to go, this was it. And let me just find the images, and here they are. We're good to go, I think, yeah. We can now hit apply right here. So simply hit apply, and it is gonna slice every individual sprite. So now I can click on the drop down list before or below or near the items. And now we have a button which is separate. We have the diamond which is separate. We have the door, the exit, the ground and the ground is what we need. So I'm gonna take the ground and I'm simply gonna drag and drop it right here in our gameplay. And this is what we see now. So notice this is what we see and what we have. I am gonna reposition the ground right below Somewhere around here, I think it will do. And we are gonna do or repeat the same process. So let me just select the grounds and it's gonna be at negative 6.47. Yeah, negative 6.47. This is gonna be the position for our ground, which is okay. And every time we add something to the scene, you're gonna hold command and press S to save the scene or under file and click save scene just so that we resave everything that we add inside of this scene. And we are gonna repeat the same process as with our grounds. So I am gonna create an empty game object. So like this, I'm gonna name it grounds. So grounds. I am going to position it at zero, 00 for the X and for the Y and I'm going to simply put the ground game object inside of it. Now I'm going to simply remove or I'm going to uncheck this 
Notice here in the inspector panel, I've select selected the backgrounds game object. And we have this checkbox. When I uncheck it, we don't see our backgrounds anymore. This is because we have deactivated them. And we will do this in our game. So don't worry. Deactivating a game object is simply making it not being active in the scene. But the game object is still in the scene. If I click on it again here on this checkbox, it is going to return all of our backgrounds. But now I am simply gonna duplicate our ground. So duplicate it once, just so that we can position them without the backgrounds interfering. Holding the V key, I'm gonna snap them. I'm gonna duplicate this one and put it here. Again, holding the V key, I'm gonna snap it. And we're gonna repeat the process again. So for this ground also, holding the V key and snap it. And we need a couple of more grounds. So we need fourth, which is, we are gonna put it here, zoom in and snap it. Again, snapping it, holding the V key, and then simply drag it with your mouse. And we are also gonna zoom in and snap this one. So we are gonna have, let me just take a look at the backgrounds. Yeah, this is it. This is it. Think we are good to go. Yeah, I think we are good to go, yeah. But we will need apparently to move our grounds a little bit up because we are not seeing them. So let me just see, this is at zero, zero and our grounds are at negative 6.4. So negative 6.4, let me just put them a little bit up. Actually, they're, oh, oh, oh this is what the problem is, okay? so. Our backgrounds or our grounds are not currently visible because the backgrounds are obscuring them. Now I am going to introduce to you one concept and that is called sorting layers. So what we are going to do is we are going to select our ground and notice here in the inspector panel we have something called a sprite render and notice it has this sorting layer on it. So currently it's on default and all of the backgrounds are also set on default. Well, we are going to create, well, multiple sorting layers. So we're going to have the background, we are going to have the door, we are going to have the ground. So I'm going to select this right here and I'm going to click add sorting layer. And here I'm going to say background. The next sorting layer is going to be door. So door. And the next sorting layer is going to be ground. We're going to add more sorting layers, but for now, these three are sufficient. So we're going to have the background, the door and the ground. And notice what is going to happen. So currently the backgrounds are all set on the default sorting layer. We are going to move them to the background sorting layer. And all of the grounds are currently on the default sorting layer. And notice here, take a look at here in the scene, what is going to happen when I move them to the ground sorting layer. Notice, bam, let me just click here and bam. Now they are visible. Notice now they are visible. Why? Well, this sorting layer determines the rendering order. It determines which item is going to be rendered first or second or third in the scene. And the item that's first, so for example, here we have the default, which is the first. So any sprite that's on the default sorting layer will be rendered first. Now, next we have the background. So the background will be rendered on top of the default. And here we see that example clearly. So we have the background, which is second, and we have the ground, which is at fourth sorting layer. And the ground, because it's on fourth, it's going to be rendered on top of the background, which is the second, which made our grounds visible. And we can test that again. If I move the grounds back to default, they're not visible anymore because, well, the background is in front of the default sorting layer and it will be rendered on top of it. So we are going to move them on the ground sorting layer so that we have them rendered and seen here in our scene. So this was it for now. We just created our basic gameplay or actually this is going to be our scene with the backgrounds and the grounds on which we are going to move. So we are going to cut it off here, guys, and continue from the next video. So I'm going to see you then.